So here we are shown Les Demoiselles, and it translates to the ladies. Um, this painting is done by Pablo Picasso, and it's considered to be the first Cubist painting. Its style is not fully Cubist, it's pre-Cubist, but it is considered to be like one of the first ones that was created, and that's it caused a lot of, um, like, not uprise, but it's where a lot of this began. One of his associates even had said it was like swallowing paraffin when he had seen the painting. Picasso uh, said the piece will protect him from evil female spirits, and which is kind of funny. Um, there, people weren't so shocked at the idea that the women were painted naked, but instead the idea that stirred things up were the way that the women were portrayed, which is that they were made paint or not made, but painted as prostitutes, and it was also done very sexually. So this was a change in style, and it kind of brought, like, controversy among all of these things. Uh, when Picasso had done this, he said that he felt in order to be able to do paint cubism well, or p to be able to do this well, that you should be able to cut up your canvas and then reassemble it, which is very much seen in all of these paintings because they look like they are just pieces of paper that have been cut up and that kind of what is what makes the style and then also Brock which is another cubist painter he had studied from this piece and it would later on inspire many of his other ones which we will talk about as we continue Le Demoiselle was exhibited to the public in 1916. <laughs> All right, during the a time period when Brock was trying to change his style in this piece, um, he said that I want to explore the absolute and not merely the fictitious woman. And this piece was completed during June 1908. Brock had found his inspiration after seeing Le Demoiselle, and then. Many different lines were used to show the representation of women with all these lines, and it like created a mass to her. And then he used browns and grays in the piece, and it was like contrasting previous pieces that he had done before by him. And then a woman had noted and said that the woman in the photo looked like she had water pictures for breasts, and that the stomach looked like a balloon. Alright, this is Ma Jolet by Picasso. It was painted in 1911 to 1912, they say. And then it was moved towards abstraction by reducing the color as seen. And um, Picasso had just wanted to like start to abandon color so that he could move the opposite way of impressionism. The painting was related to a poster being painted in a font that was commonly seen in advertising. So it wasn't like a big huge thing. Alright, this painting is Still Life with Open Window by Juan Gris, and it was painted in 1915. He used blue to stuff sorry, the work and bring back color. This piece was seen as breakthrough work for Juan, and it was shown to combine indoor and outdoor views within the same painting. The piece here shown is called The Card Players. Um, this piece was originally done by Suzanne, and it was the same exact name, but um, Fernand Laguerre, he took a different twist on the piece himself and recreated it. Uh, he, this was recreated because he was influenced by him, and he did like study his work, and in, so that's what led to the recreation of it. During this time period when um, Fernand Laguerre had created this piece, he had just gotten out of war and he was recovering from a gas attack in World War I. And in the photo or the painting, you can see that the men have helmets on and that's supposed to show them as soldiers. So you can see the influence between his personal life here and how it is brought into his paintings. Not only that, but like, you can see his style, and it's 
like a reoccurring thing that he has oftentimes. He likes to show uh, the common man. And so showing soldiers is like the perfect example of it. And it just brings into his style. Also, if you look at the detail of the painting, you can see there's lots of cylinders. And that's his own put on cubism that he called tubism. And so that's part of his work. As previously mentioned, um, Fernand did serve in the war, and he was in a gas attack. When he had painted this painting, he was in the hospital recovering from the gas attack. And so, by showing the army men in the photo, it's he was reflecting on his time as he had served with his fellow like men in the army. And so it kind of like brought back memories for him. And it also showed, the, like, the types of activities they would depict and take place in. When referring to the photo, many have liked to said or say that by turning this into a Cubist-style painting and breaking down the men into, like, geometric shapes and different styles, they, he has turned the men into, like, a machine which is often what he referred to in many of his paintings and even in the mechanical era, which this is like the beginning of because he, since he's just gotten out of war. This piece here is done by Juan Gris and it's a portrait of Picasso. Um, Juan Gris did this as a tribute to Picasso because he felt so highly of him. Since Picasso did start Cubism and he was a big idol, it kind of does make sense how that all worked out. Um, you can see he uses cool colors in this, going along with cu Cubism. Their colors, they didn't use very much bright colors, but as some of the artists continue, like Greece, he does use more colors. Greece is um, painting in this. He was in the style and theme of cubism but he did it in a modern type of way and it's seen because it's not when you compare them to the other ones the main ones like Brock and Picasso's paintings you do see a difference within for or at least from theirs and his prior to this painting of Picasso Greece had a hard time like getting his footing in the in with all the other artists he didn't gain popularity until about like five years later and that is when people truly started to recognize his work more and then he got placed in the category of, with cubism and along with picasso and brock this painting was done in 1913 so it was more towards the end of Picasso and Brock working together because they worked together from 1909 to 1914. More of Brock's style is shown in this piece because the piece is monochromatic, so muted colors, and it also has writing in the piece, in, or in the collage itself, which is also something common of Brock. He used many different elements in this piece to help lead your eye around the painting which does make it more interesting to the eye, which is very important in art. Um, the guitar is seen to be resting on the shoulder of the woman. He includes um, a separation of different types of planes within the piece that does help move your eye around even more. And it creates like a balance within the piece. All right, so this is Pablo Picasso and just some background about him. He quoted and said, I don't paint what I see, I paint what I know. And then he also said, to paint is to destroy. And then at the age of 19, Pablo was impressing his friends by sketching them in cafe style. And he also said that the hand of the artist is the hand of the mat mat matador. <laughs> um, Picasso often joined objects and figures in space on a grid. And he began collaging with Brock and like they were 
the first to start it, and that's what started more cubism, is the collages. In 1915, Picasso's love passed away, and then that's when he began to paint unfinished canvases. canvases. Picasso and Brock had never really wanted to move into the realm of total abstraction in their cubist art, so they tried to stray away from doing that. He began to letter his art to bring attention to composition, compositional elements of the painting. And then also, <clears throat> when his, his best friend had passed, he began painting in blue. So that's like where you see um, it come up in his paintings. Alright, so there's actually two types of cubism. And the one we're looking at right now is analytical cubism. And it seems to come off more intense and has darker tones like blacks, grays, ochres. And the art itself includes more lines and planes than the other style of cubism. Alright, and then we're on to the second style of cubism. And that's synth synthetic cubism. And it appears to be brighter colors and a grouping of simpler shapes than analytical. Whereas that's, you know, the planes and the lines and the dull colors. Alright, now that we know about the two different types and a little bit about Picasso, we're going to just give you some more information to look at. So another name for cubism was hermetic. Um, the artist often used still life in a studio as a starting point. And then stacked newspapers to add multiple light, like multiple angles on the poster. Excuse me, sorry. Alright, so the artists also felt that they were at a standstill, so they pushed analytical studies to logical conclusions. Um, the materials were intended to realize how odd it was and see that the world is odd. And then the use of strong colors in large areas with visual weight related to near and far objects to help with the their dimensions. Um, the artist used slanted brushes, slanted brush strokes. My bad. Brock had a tendency also to show objects as exploding generally in his paintings. Um, other materials like oil, cloth, and wallpaper were used. And uh, the cloth is shown in one of Picasso's paintings that we'll look at later on. And it's like to like show a chair in the painting sorry um but it was when they used like these different materials that's like what brought them to collaging more often like you you saw in the paintings how they have like the different objects and stuff and it it seems like a collage but then like when they, you start incorporating the different objects you know that's what really makes it and um brock would overlap geometric structures to make it seem 3d Alright, so this next piece that we're looking at is Still Life with Chair Canning, and it's by Picasso. It was done in 1912, and it shows a tabletop of a cafe. Um, it starts, it was the start of painting and collage, and like that's what I was talking about earlier, is when they use these different materials and cloths. And so that material that you see that looks like the webbing of the chair is... Um, it is actually cloth, but it's just like a textured cloth, and uh, they picked it up, thought it was cool, so they used it in the painting. And if you look towards like the middle almost of the painting, that you you know you see the words in there. It, I'm not gonna butcher it, but the J O U because I can't speak French. It means gang. Um. Yeah, it's in French. <laughs> but this is also called canning chair because of the way it's angled. It makes it appear that the chair is tucked underneath the table. And that's that look you get of like all the objects on, on top of the table. And that's where that cloth would come in and the look it would give it. Alright, the piece that we're looking at now is my maquette for guitar and I'm just gonna apologize now pronunciation is not very good for me um, but it is by Picasso 
and it was also done in 1912. Um, the sculpture is made to as like an experiment rather than just to collage, and um, it was made out of cardboard, paper, string, and wire, and then it was like all glued together. This is Paul Cezanne. Um, Paul was thought to be an influence for Cubism because of the viewpoints of his paintings were different than most at the time. Paul was a French artist and a post-impressionist painter, and it laid foundations to the transition. Um, he influenced the lack of three-dimensionality of the art. He also used simple forms to simplify nature. So we are kind of going backwards now, but Cubism was um, originally created by George Brock and Pablo Picasso. They were like the founders, or like the people that started it. They collabed together, and put their ideas together. And Cubism also emerged in the 19th century. Uh, Cubism was a result of industrialization as well, and Cubist celebrated freedom from constraints of the Renaissance. The artist wanted to destroy the physical barriers of art because um, a lot of the art was like believed that it had to be of just nature and be realistic. Um, the rebellion in the art area in the time created it cleared the air for forthcoming of a freedom to create rather than imitate and construct and that's what I was talking about where they felt like you had to paint just realism all the time pretty much when the artists were painting they wanted to paint to create an illusion of peering at a window of the world by making it flat and then the statement of painting was to make everything equally intense when they were painting all right the subject of painting became a formal investigation for peers to look at and the painter pushed away ideas of art becoming, or being a copy of nature, as we talked about, like, a second ago. Cubas wanted to show and emphasize of the two-dimensional figures on their canvas. The eye's perception of three dimension is due to coordination of the two eyes, and so that's what the painters were focusing on. The art became so abstract that it became a series of planes and lines overlapping with dull colors. The art system assumed a fixed vision from the peers looking at the piece in one space in a point of time. And so that's where you get like when you're peering through the window. Open door it opened doors to abstract art like constructivism and neoplasticism. The peer viewing the piece was to con contemplate the piece for an extended time period to understand it. So you weren't supposed to understand cubism, you're supposed to look at it more. And the pictor pictorial elements were to catch the viewer's emotion to get an intuitive response. So that's why you sit there for extended periods of time. This piece here um, is showing a collage of different types of items that are used. But this time they didn't paint these on. Um, some of them are painted on, but he did use uh, like real life objects to show it. Like he actually chose to use the newspaper in there, and the different cutouts and like outlines sh help to show the difference between the objects. The guitar and the table are to be shown from like an above perspective, and then. The glass and the bottle are to be seen from the side. So it gives it like a different type and it keeps your eyes busy. This piece was made in 1913. Um, the style is called paper colles and it, it was a way to try and evolve cubism is what Picasso and Brock had wanted. It was started from 1912 to 1913. Um, Brock he would use wood grain in his, and then Picasso, as you had seen in the piece, um, chose to use newspaper. Oftentimes during this time period, the artist 
would put more thought into how to create the piece more than they would the subject matter. They also like to incorporate different types of things into their pieces. When they, so like, for example, Picasso, he, with the paper coles, he would like, he put lots of different references, like, into his pieces. And so, if you paid close enough attention, you could see them. And they could be small events or they could be big events, like, relating to the war or just minor things that were going on. But whether, no matter what it was, he was still making sure his art was, like, going along with what was happening around him. Some people have thought that Cubism has was stemmed from the idea of privatism and Africism because when you looked at the first um, sculptures and paintings, you could see in Picasso's work that he did have bits and pieces of Africism in his works. The Cubism grew in France in 1910, and it was being spread to other countries all around, and so then that's really when the movement was growing even more. Cubists wanted their art to tie into tradition, but they also wanted to say it was classical, so they kind of just, they, but they didn't fall in that category completely because their art was causing so many other, like, disputes about what it was since it wasn't normal and many of the faces were mask-like and they weren't as personal. Part of the reason the movement began was because many of the artists wanted to get away from what they said was an overindulgence in color so that you can see in many of their um, early uh, works that they had very like muted tones and they were monochromatic. Um, the two won the different way for the modern age to be seen, so Picasso and Brock, since they were the creators of the movement. Uh, and Picasso wanted to show what he knew to be there and what nature was really showing. So you can see that in some of his other works. And so that goes along with the idea of him like bringing in the events of what was happening around him with uh, society. Diego Rivera was a follower of Cubism from 1914 to 1916. By 1912, Brock and Picasso had grown strong with their the paintings and their styles, so that meant that from 1913 to 1914 that the two could focus on colors and making their paintings more naturalistic. In 1913, um, no one else really had contributed to the movement from there on out. So it wasn't really growing as much anymore. And then in 1914, the war broke out and things were solved. Along with that, the true Cubists were moving then into a constructive period. Those in the military, or those that wanted to serve in the military but couldn't serve, then uh, would do sculptures, create sculptures. And then they would also be the ones that kept Cubism alive and keep it going on. In 1911, the movement was getting more attention in the press. That's the reason it was growing even more. And then from there on, the writers and many other, like not only for the newspaper, but many writers for literature, they were dedicating different forms of literature to the painters that they had respected. And then many artists felt that their work was to affect the modern man in the way that they would see things. So they wanted them to feel like the work was for them and that somehow they could have a connection to it. Alright, this piece is Glass of Beer and Playing Cards by Juan Gris. And in the image you can see the the cards in the, towards like the left side it's in like that little panel like second to the left panel and then you see the glass of uh, beer on the table and it's supposed to like create vertical lines and that carries up to the top of the paper um the intention was to be simple but not boring to look at and cubism had let 
led to a path of non-representational art, as you can see in the picture. Because um, there's not a whole lot of meaning behind it, but you're also supposed to see a round table within the photo, and that's the brownish color you see. Cubists in their era also became interested in the new world with um, machine-driven objects. The scientific revolution had also inspired the artists to push the limits of dislike more towards art because a lot of people fought it because they just didn't see a point behind it. They had also wanted to incorporate the question of time. So there was sometimes numbers, but a lot of times it was just like you never really knew like what part of the day or when things were happening in the photo. Cubism has, had also concerned other artists because they thought they were representing imagery in an objective manner. Um, since the Cubists had drawn away from the traditional art, they said, uh, they were said to have a role in modifying the illusions of the public in accordance with its own creation. This piece is called Three Women, and it is by Fernand Laguerre. Um, so as you see in the painting, the three women are nude, and they're drinking some sort of like hot beverage. Uh, they don't know whether it's hot, like tea or coffee. And then they are in an upscale apartment. N uh, nude women at the time were common, but this was a little bit different because the bodies were rounded out, and they weren't made to look super feminine. They almost look like doll like because they don't have like much shape and then that the fact that it eliminates their feminine femininity it eliminates emotion and it it's because um Laguerre probably wanted a calmer environment compared to what he was used to since at the current time the war was going on people had said that his um precision was machine like because Within the photo, you can see everything was aligned, and the lines were straight, and they were, things were symmetrical and lined up. This relates um, to like all the craziness that was happening during World War One, because at this was in the mechanical period during the time when he was creating all his pieces, and then it also shows how life has become simplistic and more robotic at the time. For the fact that these women do look emotionless. He worked on this piece with great detail for two years. And during that time period, he still was putting out other pieces, but he was perfecting this one. And then, if you do look at this, there's uh, there are um, other pieces where some of the women from this one are reoccurring in other ones of his works. So they kind of have an ongoing theme. Um, his idea of tubism is shown here because you can see it slightly. It's not as much as some of his other ones, but for the way that the women are shaped. He does use shadowing here to outline his figures because he doesn't have any outlines. So shadowing is what he uses for that. He didn't want the women to look beautiful in the piece because he felt that if they did, that they would take away the focus from the rest of his painting and the background is what which is what he wanted you to pay attention to and then if you do look at the women the tan woman on the right seems to be more disconnected than and like independent than the two women on the left because the two women on the left seem to be more connected and in touch This is by George Brock. It's Houses at La Stique. Um, the landscape was reduced so that it was just a simpler pattern and like there wasn't as much detail. And it's simplified by the various shapes and like the minimal detail. The houses were painted, the houses and the tree you see were painted from multiple perspectives and so that it makes it so there's no vanishing point like we would generally see in most paintings. 
it gave each object in this scene a more comprehensive description by doing so. And so when you look at it, you see the um, house, it's more in the foreground or in the background than the foreground. Uh, Brock had a habit of using the multiple or perspectives oftentimes, and he generally painted analytical cubism, and that's where you see the dull colors, the dull color scheme. And it, it, the image is depicting the houses of a French fishing village. The title of this piece is Piano and Mandala, and it is by George Brock. Um, the objects in this piece are very broken down, but you're still able to depict what they are. So this, at this point, this was when um, Brock was transitioning, and so you can see how he was really trying to like work his way into cubism. Because um, all the objects are so broken down, it constantly keeps the viewer's eyes moving all over the painting and keeps them interested more and for a longer period of time. The candle in the piece um, represents stability. Also, this was at a time when uh, George Brock was transitioning from using brighter colors, like fob colors, and he switched over to like more monochromatic or darker colors. Um, and then also there's different objects like the piano, the mandala, and then there's sheet music, but the sheet music is basically gone in the piece. And they say that the mandala has been like decomposed. Brock himself has said that it was a way for me to get close as possible to the object as painting allowed. And then this piece was also made in 1910. In the start of Picasso and Brock working together, they were surrounded by a feeling for the architecture. The preferred pieces to create by Picasso and Brock were generally still lifes and the landscapes rarely came up. And artists argued nature is never still and this, this resulted in Picasso referencing the fourth dimension and um, Picasso and Brock had created a fourth dimension in their artwork is what was told and that's how they got their non-realistic art. Picasso and Brock became consumed with the problem of representing complexity of reality in the art. Um, Cubism described after war as an end product of a progressive closing down of possibilities. They also led into popular styles like art deco design and architecture. Um, point care, point, I, it's pronounced funny, but it was explained that the non Lucian um, geometry is to show that geometrical space was a result of construction of the mind under influence of certain needs. And so, like, you know, because they use so many different geometric objects within their photos. Picasso and Brock were both living in uh, Paris together when they first started. Con Wheeler supported Picasso and Brock in the start of them experimenting, ex experimenting with cubism. Uh, Brock first introduced cubism to the public in November 1908. It was argued that the artists were aware of many current events at the time due to like their paintings and them like studying their surroundings. Cubism phase was popular among many well-known artists during World War I, Paul Ren Rosenberg distributed uh, Picasso's, Picasso's art. And the idea of collage um, was invented by Brock, but Picasso first tried it out. And that's seen like earlier on when I explained the collaging starting up and where Picasso had used that cloth material is because Brock had discovered the cloth and thought it was unique, so Picasso incorporated it within the art piece. Originally, Fernand Laguerre, um, he was discouraged for wanting to become an artist, but then in 1903, he started to, he went to, um, Paris School of Decorative Arts, 
instead and began like his career. 1907, he saw a retrospective of Suzanne's work where then he put more cubism into his own work. So then that started out his career even more. Juan Gris, he was known, he showed more volume that and like stronger volume and it was more prominent than Brock and Picasso in his works. Also, he was more into using math and cubism unlike the others. So he would like it was just how he worked it into his pieces. Also, uh, Greece and Laguerre, they were about of a group. And then they also gave their like pieces more of a scientific twist since they were a little bit later in the period. This piece is called The Mechanic and it is by Fernand Laguerre. Uh, it is one of his more notable paintings from his mechanical era, which started in 1917, and it was after he had served in the military, as previously mentioned. Um, cubism was still present even in his own style, which he called tubism, like seen in other pieces before, but this is still present in many of his pieces, and just like the three women, um, you can tell that his body's not very, like, sculpted and it's more just like common shapes like his arms are kind of just like cylinders or tubes like you would see and he often liked to incorporate the common man into his pieces just like his piece with um all of the soldiers he wanted everyone to see the common man or the everyday man in his pieces and this one shows um more of a blue collar type of job into this piece and so during this time period with the war going on this would be more relatable to everyone else since people were in the industry where they were forced and not forced but they were doing blue collar jobs <laughs> This piece is Violin and Candlestick. It was done by George Brock, George's Brock in 1910. George, in this photo scene, he um, broke down pieces and flattened them, and it created a multiple point perspective. And he described this kind of uh, technique as for getting closer to an object. Due to this piece, uh, George became more obsessed with form and stability, and he wanted to create more of an illusion to the viewer and so that it would create movement within the piece. By doing so, he used the um, black outlines and the earth tones to within out the whole object. Also seen, he grouped all the objects together towards the center, kind of like a grid, and he managed to unite the objects but, and unite the background by opening up and covering the boundaries of the black outlined objects where you see that color tone again being used um, to create movement. Within this painting, um, there's supposed to be a violin, a fruit bowl, a candlestick, and a newspaper. And it's because he wanted, he painted his belongings and it was another still life of his. By painting this into broken pieces and the overlapping of them, it gave an impression that George's mood oftentimes was very confused and uh, limiting the colors. By using the colors that he used, it became sort of a metaphor for his current state of mind because he couldn't tell one feeling from another. And so as it's been seen um, throughout this whole movement, it's progressed pretty, like, fast, and the styles have changed between different artists, which is a common thing for movements, but each artist had their own style. Um, and you could see in the different pieces how they revolved around the time period that they were in, and how many of them related to uh, when the war was going on. They like to stay involved with their society, and many of the artists, like had mentioned before, those that couldn't serve in the military 
did contribute to Cubism. So the movement um, had seemed to progress pretty well.